Activity four is mixed media, Hantavasa, landscape, cityscape. This is a big activity, so I've got lots to say. We're gonna start off by looking at one of his works, and I've chosen a work that's really busy and got lots going on on purpose. So this is something that you can discuss with your students. What you're heading towards is a discussion about your surroundings. So at the bottom here, I'm just slide this up, I can see boats, rivers, his people's head in here, that which he uses as part of the landscape. He's got his buildings with his onion top. There's a car, so there's obviously some sort of journey in the middle. Um, a person here. And down here we've got, it looks like a roundabout or roads with little houses here. A village at the back on the red lines. You've got smoke coming out of the chimney. You've got trees. It's very, very, very busy. He also, like a child, has different viewpoints. So there are frontal pictures and there are bird's eye view pictures. And children can relate to this. The busyness and the bright colours and all the symbols and shapes this is how they draw. It doesn't always have to make sense. So we're not worried about our picture making sense. So the equipment, there's a lot of equipment, so I'm gonna break this down into two parts as I would teaching the lesson. If I gave all the students all the equipment at once, it becomes a problem because they jump into grabbing the glitzy and the, the fun things without doing the building or the, the groundwork. So they're getting to the end at the start and they're, they're, it doesn't work and then they have problems. So what we need to focus on first is just getting down some bold shapes. Now, what the children do in this collage or mixed media project is up to them. You may want to limit it and say, we're gonna focus on buildings and trees and flowers or you might do a brainstorming with the students and introduce cars, aeroplanes, people walking, dogs, rain, rainbows. You might have it as a free and they can do whatever they want. That's up to the teacher to make those guidelines. For me personally, I'm gonna to stick to buildings and trees and flowers and plants because I think sometimes too much can be confusing, but someone always wants to go off on their own anyway. So the equipment we're going to start off with is corrugated paper. Now, corrugated paper is sensory. It's wonderful, it's bumpy, it feels different to cut, it's thicker, it's really lovely to work with. You can also get corrugated paper that it has patterns printed on it already, like this. And you can get metallic, glitzy, corrugated paper like this. And you can even get a corrugated paper maker. Now, corrugated paper can get a little bit expensive. And for paper variety, you might want to corrugate your own. So here is some paper. This is just cover paper, but you could use scrap glitter paper. If you have a scrap box, this corrugated maker is fantastic for your scrap box. And you just feed the paper in like this. And the kids love this because it's like magic. Get it started. There we go. That one got caught. There we go. Okay, so, and I have my own paper, so that's fantastic. So the size that you work on is up to you. This is a large sheet of corrugated paper. You might want to cut that in half. But I'm going to work on a large sheet. So I'm going to start by cutting out rooftop shapes and building shapes and laying down maybe some clouds and the basic large shapes which are going to go underneath. And then I probably will try to do a shape on a shape because I'm going to build up. So here I go. I'm going to use this because this is, this is great. Now, glue. I've got two types of glue here. I've got the glue stick. I'm going to use a bit of super tack as well. Okay. 
Now I'm going to put my buildings not quite at the bottom because I know I'm going to have a bit of a garden down there. Hold for 10 seconds to make sure it sticks. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Voila. I'll measure that. So it's the same width. While I'm working, I actually try to use the scrap papers and the negative and positive shapes because I don't like waste. Now I'm going to use a few different types of paper to make some building bases. Okay, I think that's enough for the moment. I'm very happy with what I've done. I've got my base shapes down. I've tried to include some shapes on top of a shape. So my clouds are a circle-y shape with another circle. I've got three buildings. I've also used the negative space of my cutout for the top of the building. So I've cut this shape out, which was going to be the top of this building but then I liked the negative space. So I've used the negative cutout instead of throwing it away. And I did a triangle, which was sort of going to be a rooftop shape, but I made it upside down. So it was a little bit different and teardrop windows. And I've got my corrugated paper going vertical and horizontal, which is your art language. You've got horizontal lines, vertical lines, and the act of cutting corrugated paper is very sensory and it feels great and because some of our students don't like to cut and lose their lose patience with cutting sometimes giving them a different type of paper can bring that excitement back and it looks great and this would be the end of the first part of the lesson and then I'm going to come back and bring some more art materials and we're going to start the second part of the lesson. So the first part of this lesson was to do our buildings in the corrugated paper and you would let that dry with the glue and come back for the second part of the lesson a week later or your next art lesson. Now we are introducing loads of art equipment now, embellishment, so I'm just going to go through what I have in front of me. So I have these little metallic cupcake holders, we've got sequins, buttons, these are called stackable jewels and each stack is a different shape. I've got pom-poms, glitter pom-poms here. I've got chenille stems, lumps and bumps and these bumpy ones are really fantastic. We're going to be using those. I have magi clay. I'm using super tack as my glue because I need a strong glue. So there's lots of lots of glitz and glamour here. Now what's going to happen is if you 
put it all out, some people might go a little bit crazy. So you're going to have to maybe make a plate and put little bits on the plate and put that in the middle and then chop it up as you see fit or hand it out however you like. I know that if I left it all out, it will be gone in a flash. Now this is for, the embellishments are for the building or to make rain or to make flowers or to make gardens. The magic clay we're going to use two ways. This is really important. I need to use the magic clay today as a glue. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to use that as a glue and talk my way through it. So I'm going to not use, I'm actually going to use the black. The reason why I need to use the magic clay as a glue is because I'm going to use it with the chenille stems. And these are really hard to hold in place with glue. Not impossible, but this makes it easier. So I'm going to make a flower head. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the magic clay and ball that up and pop that on my work as a flower, the centre of a flower, and use the jaws of the scissors, the stronger part, which I always say to the children. I just hold that with my finger like that. And I like these little bumps, so I'm going to cut some of these. Really, to make it better, I should use two colours, so I'm going to do that. And using mixed media, which means we're using lots of different things, it's going to give it a real sculptural element. Okay. So there's my magic clay, which I'm going to get a little bit of yellow magic clay. And put a dot of that. And these are going to be like flower stems. And I'm just going to push a bit of the wire in like this. Now when the magic clay dries, it dries hard like paper mache. And these things, I don't think I'd be able to glue, I wouldn't be able to do that without the magic clay. So the magic clay has become a really important way to glue. I'll take those ones off. The other way I'm going to use magic clay, and I'm going to use some blue and yellow is to combine it by making some sausages. This is another way to make a flower. So I would actually demonstrate this to the students so they can see different ways to use it and then let them go and experiment. And again, it'd be something that I hand, handed out myself and controlled how much they use. And I know that art teachers have to control and protect their art equipment. Okay, so I'm going to show the students how to twirl it. This always reminds me of not just Hunter Vasa and his lollipop trees, and it also reminds me always a little bit of Dr. Seuss. These techniques can be used in different activities. Okay, I'm going to make a, another flower by then making the spiral shape. Ooh, I'm going to leave that bit because I like it. Then I've got to work out where I want to put it. I'm going to put that next to my building. And Magic Clay will stick straight to the paper. So that's another way to use the Magic Clay. Same with the patty pans. They can go straight on as is. They can be cut. And with the pom-pom glitter balls, you, you just need a decent blob of super tack and I'll put these as maybe drops of rain. So I'm going to play with all this equipment and, and put things on and see what happens and have a little play. So here I go.
right, so just coming to an end now. I have managed to create square raindrops, colourful clouds, buildings, flowers, sequins. It's got lots going on. I've got to use my fine motor skills and glue things and layer things and build things. And I had difficulty with some things and have to solve problems and create a whole fantasy world. And I love it. I got to use a wide variety of materials, a bit of everything, but not loads of one thing. So I've got to handle a lot of equipment, which is, as we know for students, very exciting. In this, we've also got, we've got colour, we've got shape, we've got our imagination working and creativity, because we've had to make a city. And we've, even though Hunter Vasa didn't like the straight lines, but he used lines all the time, and the corrugated paper gives us that as well. So display it and you've got another winner.